Hi there, Joseph Kursky here to talk to you about something really powerful that you can do because we have this whole cloud-based environment. And that is if you've got some different data layers locally on your machine and you're comparing them to newer maps or satellite imagery or any other kind of uh, data layer online, you can actually do some really powerful uh, land cover land use change analysis. So for example, I've got this black and white digital ortho photo quad from 1983. And I also have behind it a newer satellite image from 2013. So I've got a 30 year comparison that I can do here. I'm going to go to my bookmarks and I'm going to look at the north side here briefly so you can see what I mean. So for example, see this new newish subdivision? It looks fairly new. It's not totally filled in yet. This is on the north end of Blair, Nebraska in the wonderful Lewis Hills of Nebraska. It looks new also because there aren't that many trees growing in here yet. So if I look back at 1983, you can see that roads have just been blazed. And then by 2013, you can see some houses on those roads. Also what's interesting is notice the difference in resolution. In 1983, you know, we were content with one, two, five meter resolution imagery. And uh, those all came from the original actual physical photos, aerial photos that then were scanned and made into DOQ. So oftentimes they were sort of a, at the time, a high resolution. But now we're so used to looking at this meter or sub-meter resolution, as you can see behind it, that uh, it's really kind of amazing to look at the difference in resolution. But you can do lots of interesting uh, comparisons in terms of land use, land cover change. So here we're looking at the uh, another side. This is the east side of Blair, Nebraska, and you can see some changes going on on the east side of town as well. So those are some powerful things you can do. Let's take a look in a similar way with the topographic maps. The interesting thing to note is that even though we've got topographic maps streamed from the web here, let's take a look at what we have. We have a digital raster graphic on the west side of this map and a digital raster graphic topographic maps layer uh, from the USGS and then enhanced by National Geographic with the shaded relief that you see there behind it. So if I just look at the 1985-ish vintage topographic map, the map layer behind it, this topographic map that you see here, is by and large not updated. Okay, It's still from the original topographic map. Those topographic maps weren't updated. If you want newer topographic features, then what you need to do is you need to change the base map to the ESRI base map. So I'm going to change the base map by going to this add base map out on ArcGIS Online and it's going to look for the new topographic base map. Now the reason why is because the original USGS topos were enhanced with the shaded relief but the, the features weren't updated. So again if you want the updated features you need to go grab the ESRI topographic base map. Okay, so see this topographic choice here on add base map? I'm going to go ahead and add that. And that's going to change my base map. Now I can also add it as a layer on top of my existing base map. So either one of them are fine. But now let's take a look at this base map that I have. Over on the north side of town, you can see what I mean. Here is the original 1983 digital raster graphic. A little piece of the Earth's surface that I actually had from the USGS. Now let's take a look at the USA Topo Maps layer, which is behind. And now I've just taken off my digital raster graphic that I had locally. So this Topo layer is the USA Topo layer from, again, USGS, not updated, but enhanced with the shade of relief. And you can see that center part in there that didn't show this new subdivision. But if I change the base map now to my world Topo map, now I see this whole subdivision that's in here that you can easily see on the satellite image that I can pull up right here. Okay, so there's that subdivision. So the point is, is that you can actually stream data down from ArcGIS Online into your local project and you can do all sorts of things beyond which I've showed you here which is this simple analysis of land cover change. Great! Also, one last note that in my project, notice I've got this in NAD83 UTM Zone 14. The beautiful thing is that these data sets, when you stream them down, morph to the map projection that you're using, which is a beautiful thing when you realize all the complicated uh, uh, mathematics that are going on behind the scenes. So if I actually right-click on this base map and go to the layer, 
see this? It is actually projecting the whole world, which is the, the data that it actually is a, can access, uh, into UTM zone 14, which is actually centered on Nebraska, which is what I'm looking at right now. If I take that base map image off, now I'm looking at the topo image. And again, it's, it's reprojected everything to UTM zone 14N North American Datum 1983. It's a beautiful thing, being able to have data locally and also stream data online. And of course, you can actually upload your local data to the ArcGIS Online cloud as well. So you've got the best of both worlds. You've got local data, you've got tools, you've got online data and tools there as well. Thanks.